if your dad could only take one of the two of you in a plane, like <laughs> I only get one spin, who do you think he's taking and why? Josh, it's not even close. <laughs> What? <laughs> Josh is the favorite by far. It's not even close. Yeah, my mom went to high school a second time actually for Josh. <laughs> what, what the hell does that mean? That means that she that he figured out how to procrastinate long enough that she'll just swipe in and do it. <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 193 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And I think possibly for the first time ever, although I'm not so sure, I'll have to check in the archives. We have a Texas Ranger represented on the show, Nathaniel Lowe. Congratulations. Welcome to the party. Thanks, guys. Nice to be here. All right. Well, it's just me. So you can oh, just okay. say hi. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks, Whatever. Chris. <laughs> All right. All right. So first thing I need to... I almost always wear the hat of our guest on the show. Yeah, I was going to say so something, I, but okay, thank you. Good choice. I love this color of the Texas Ranger because I also have the red. Here's the problem. Okay. You're kind of fortunate because I usually don't shower before I do these things, but okay. I did today and I even did what little hair I have left on my head up here and it looks kind of nice. Hey, so, I feel you there, man, but yeah, we should probably <laughs> put hats on. <laughs> so do I... Do I do I wear the hat and mess up the hair or do I just kind of hold the hat and keep the hair pristine? I think if you hold the hat for at least 20 minutes, like it'd be good like that. And then you could put it on. So just leave it there. for you got it, buddy. <laughs> there we go. I'm, I'm way too damn old to hold a hat for 20 minutes. So here we go. I'm sacrificing the hair. I want to start with this. Sure. When you came up to the big leagues, I knew you as Nate Lowe. Did you become like some sort of colonial figure and transfer your name to Nathaniel Lowe? No, <laughs> no. On my birthday in 2021, my mom asked me if she could tweet at the team. And I, I'm not, I have a Twitter account, but I'm not on Twitter. And yeah, she just said, you know, I, I named you Nathaniel. Do you care if I say something? I'm like, you know, what are you going to say to your mom? You know, no, don't do that. So yeah, she, she tweeted it. It was a PR nightmare after that for a while. And then now here we are. Two years later, still asking. So, yeah, um, it was a bit of a mess. But for a while there, my official MLB.com profile said that my full name was David Natel, N-A-T-E-L. And, I, you know, I've had some good ones, you know, like Nat and, and Nate and Nathan and Nathaniel and you name it. But Natel was a new one. So we had to kind of address that as a whole. But, yeah, everyone still calls me Nate. I really don't care. But. My mom calls me Nathaniel. My family calls me Nathaniel. And uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, wait. Did you say Natel? N-A-T-E-L. I have n I've never met anyone named Natel. Um, no idea where, <laughs> like what language of origin that's from. But, you know, that uh, that's what we deal with. Well, you know, when they come to the, the baby names, I think it's right before Nutella yeah. is Natel. <laughs> so let's, let's go with that. Sure. Um, yeah, my, the only person who ever called me Christopher was my was my late mother. Uh -huh. So, do you when they announce now hitting Nathaniel Lowe, do you feel like you're in trouble? Uh, not quite. You know, uh, last night I did with Charlie Morton on the mound, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how it goes some nights. Um, yeah, Charles P. Morton the fourth. Yeah, he stuck it to us last night. So yeah, when when Chuck Morgan said. Now batting Nathaniel Lowe, I was definitely in trouble, but you know, that's how it goes. Uh, that's fine. I like it. It's just official, it, but it, you know, sometimes umpires, will, Hey, uh, Nathaniel, they'll like make a joke out of it. Whatever. I'm like, dude, <laughs> whatever, you know, like, Stu, <laughs> Do you like look at him here. Uh, Stu Sherwater, right. Canadian guy, Stuart Sherwater is what I say to him when I walk in, and he, you know, man, the only one that calls me Stuart's my mother. I say, all right, well, you're Stuart now to me. So yeah, it's a it's a good time. <laughs> and what was his reaction? He laughed. He thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah. the guys usually you, take it pretty lightly. So as first baseman, guys that I've either worked with over the years or have uh, covered over the years, you always seem to have the best relationships with umpires because, I mean, first base isn't a day off. That's third base. Third base is the day off, <laughs> but it's the day before they got to work behind the plate and they're going to kind of grind. And so you could really kind of ease whatever anxiety they ha might have going into their day of work the next day. So it's imperative that you have a good relationship with them, right? 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I like last night um, with this crew that we have, like uh, Dan Merzell is going to be behind the dish tonight. And Dan is, uh, we, we go, had some bouts in AAA. He's thrown out some hitting coaches, like one of my favorite staffers that I've ever been around. He threw him out of the game. It was like clockwork, you know, it was like, all right, well, we got Dan this series. I'm getting tossed. Like, duh. I tell him all the time, I'm like, dude, quit, quit looking so happy to be here because he's got this real blank stare, right? And he just kind of stick his lip out on occasion, look over at me, and I'm like, dude, you know, get excited. It's a big lease. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if that'll butter him up or not, but at least you got to make an effort for sure. So who are the best guys to talk to? <sighs> mm, I don't know. Uh, I like talking to Jordan Baker. He's he's real tall. Everyone knows Baker. Mm -hmm. Um I like poking at Phil Cuzzy and Ron Culpa because, you know, they've been around for so long. Like, you know, I, I'm sure like Ron Culpa's, you know, had run-ins with guys that I grew up watching on TV, you know, or I remember I, everybody's seen the highlight of Albert Bell getting hit. Right. And, uh, and not going to first base and Ed Hickox is behind the plate. So, I, you know, of course I say something, Ed Hickox, he's like, man, you know, I, I told him to go to first base, but it's not like you really want to get in his way because, you know, he's however big he is and all that stuff. But, yeah, you know, the old guys are fun, but there's a couple guys here and there that keep it light, have good conversation. Uh, I try and make sure Rob Drake's paying attention to the game. You know, it's uh, it's fun. It's a good time. <laughs> Tell my guy Jimmy Wolf that – he's probably never going to break 80 on the golf course. Again. <laughs> first of all, absolutely. If we catch him on a getaway day and he's got, he's got first base, like first you got to rattle him about how tight his sleeves are. Right. Cause Wolf is always in the gym. And the same thing with uh, Ryan Blankney, you know, Ryan Blankney's stretching all the time. I got to tell him, dude, like, I don't know what you stretch for. It's not like you're going back to the weight room again for another two weeks. Like save it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Today's episode of the Chris Rose Rotation presented to you by these guys on over at Shady Rays. I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. So Shady Rays offers world-class product, just as good as any expensive pair. And you know what else they do? They keep your money in your wallet. These other places, give me that. Give me that money. Not here at Shady Rays. On top of that, Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. You've heard me talk about this a ton of times, right? You break these bad boys. You lose them in the ocean. They want to purchase. You know what you do? You don't cry in the corner and say, oh, my God, I lost my favorite pair. No, you pick up the phone and you say, hey, Shady Rays, I screwed up. I broke my sunglasses. I lost them. Mr. Rose, that's quite all right. We have your address on file. They'll be sent out right away. What? You don't have any questions for me? No, sir. We just appreciate that you're a customer. We want you looking and feeling your best. So head on over to ShadyRays.com and do your thing. In fact, exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays has given out their best deal of the season. At ShadyRays.com, use the code word ROSE. You are going to get 50% off two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses. You got that? Code word ROSE at ShadyRays.com, two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses. And when you break them and you lose them, they'll replace them. They're the best around. You grew up in Marietta, Georgia, correct? I did, yes. So that automatically made you a Braves fan, didn't it? Ah, by default, yes. Okay, so which which era guys? Were you an Andrew Jones, Chipper Jones, John Smoltz? Was Glavin gone? Maddox, fill me in. Yeah, um, I mean, you name it. Yeah, anytime. Like, we, we moved in to the house that we grew up in in 2001, was there all the way through high school. So first grade through high school, you name it. Um, I mean, I'll never forget the Andrew Jones mural that was on the wall at the O Charlie's that we used to go eat at right down the road. You know, like I, my my dad was in the Navy and went overseas and one of his friends uh, won an auction for a pitching lesson with Tom Glavin. So Josh and I have a picture in Tom Glavin's backyard when his house is getting built of, you know, something he didn't really have to do, but hang out with him for an hour before a game and. I don't remember if it was a start day or not, or if he was already on the Mets at that point, you know, but local legend, you know, the best left-handed starters of all time. Like, you know, like that's how it goes. So it, it was really cool to, you know, grow up local, go to Turner field and then go to SunTrust. And then now I haven't gotten a chance to play at Truist yet, but yeah, I definitely a Braves fan by default. That's awesome. And by the way, in like in a couple of years, you're going to be playing against Andrew Jones's kid. Uh, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? 
That is unreal. So who was your dude growing up? Chipper Jones. Absolutely Chipper Jones, you know? And like, yeah, I used to always say, or my grandma and mom used to always say, yeah, he's got that bubble gum in his mouth. And then I get older and I'm like, oh, well, it's a lot of chew stuffed in there. Like, I get it. You know, <laughs> he's doing what he does. And yeah, he was great. You know, I, I, I love playing third base. Like, I, I don't know. I didn't wear number 10. We had a couple other guys that were like through and through Chipper fanatics. But yeah, I, I mean, it, I bust out the turtleneck on occasion when it matches. And I feel like that was a look that, you know, he started, or maybe not started, but was definitely known for, you know, the, the flip down shades, like those were in for so long, like that era of Braves baseball was great. You know, I, regardless of whether the team was good or not, you never forget the Brooks Conrad mishap, like all the, you know, the, the, what's it called intentional infield fly and left field where everybody threw things on the field for the next hour. Like, you know, of course, I saw Andrew Alton Simmons play for the Braves and, you know, hear rumors of about how hard he could throw it across the infield and then play with other guys who played with him. They're like, yeah, dude, like, you know, when he's putting his pants on running up the tunnel, like that's the first time that he's getting dressed that day. Like, you know, he just hangs out, shows up and plays like he's that talented. It's pretty cool stuff, man. It's really cool. That's awesome. Um, so even though you were a big leaguer already in 2021 for a couple of seasons, when they won, were you, were you able to be like, oh, this is kind of cool? Or were you like, well, fuck it. If it's not me, then I don't care. <laughs> um, you know, we're so far out of it at that point. Like them, like, because they beat Houston, right? Yeah, like that, right. that, that was, yeah, that was fine. Uh, by my standards, that was fine. And, you know, like seeing what they did, how they revamped the outfield and bring in guys who like, like Solaire struggled everywhere. And then he goes to Atlanta, he's 300 for the two months that he's in the Braves uniform or like, I don't know. I've, I've seen Eddie a couple times in Orlando and, and watching Eddie Rosario do what he does. And like, I listened to a couple games on the radio for that postseason there. Like, I, I don't know. I, I'm baseballed out at that point, especially if, you know, like the last two years in this uniform, like we were so far out of the playoffs that, you know, you don't really want to watch, but I love, actually love listening to radio broadcasts. So, you know, hearing Jock step up and hit, hit the homers in Milwaukee and all this other stuff, like I, that run, like, they deserve to finish that off and and they did. So yeah, a part of me was definitely like, wow, like, you know, hometown team, let's go. You know, Solaire hits a big homer in in Houston. Um, I, I was standing in a bar with two of my best friends um when I'm pretty sure they went back to back in Atlanta when Jordan ran into the wall trying to catch that next homer. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was just, you know, in Jacksonville, like there's so many Braves fans around there that it, it felt like it was a Braves bar and I, it was Halloween weekend. So it was a good time, but yeah, I won't forget that. Uh, but yeah, now that they're here and <laughs> smoked us last night, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing them drop a couple. What'd you go dressed as? Uh, I, was nothing. I was absolutely nothing. I dressed as a regular pedestrian. So you should have uh, worn a Nathaniel Lowe Jersey. I've <laughs> been like, yeah, I'm a huge fan of his dude. Yeah, God, right? He's great. Best looking guy, the best hair in the league, honestly. <laughs> show hair. That is some show hair, dude. Well, so if if you were a uh if you were a Braves fan, that would obviously probably make you a Freddie Freeman fan since he's like one of the nicest guys in the league. So have you had a chance to have some sort of exchange at first base yet? Uh spring training. Yeah. Spring training when he was still brave. Um yeah, you know, like just casual, hey, how are you? Not like you know, hey, man, what's your secret to hitting 300 for 20 years in a row? Or like, you know, how do you, you know, stick around and win a gold glove and whatever? Like, because it took him a while. You know, that's that's a name that uh, I've definitely like paid attention to what he did and how he progressed, you know, because he was a guy who's always hit for a high average. But I, I don't know if there's a season where he's hit more than 35 homers, you know, 30 homers. And, and now it feels like all the craze is like, yeah, slug, slug, like hit 40 and you're set and all this stuff, but you know, he's a pure hitter. So, you know, I, it was pretty cool. Um, trying to think, I don't remember if I've come across him when he's been a Dodger or not, but yeah, just, just loosely here and there, like, Hey, how's it going? Like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say like, Hey man, you know, I've watched you for the last your entirety of your career. And I think you're the coolest ever cause he's still a human being, you know, but yeah, it's a, it's a treat to get around those guys and, you know, see him after, see him after watching him for as long as I have same with McCann too. I'm pretty sure I caught McCann or caught, not caught McCann. I worked in a 
game where he was catching. I got to take a couple at bats with him behind the dish. And, you know, like he's a Atlanta legend because he's from Duluth, right? Duluth or Decatur, right. one or the other. Like he's one of the best high school players ever in Georgia, like dominated high school ball. And then, yeah, you know, he caught the big leagues forever. Like, yeah, it was a treat. Well, you know what, though? It's interesting because one of our regulars on the Rose rotation is Vinny Pasquantino of the mm. Royals. He's just a big goofball, right? And he told me a couple times ago, he's like, you know, I wanted to be Evan Longoria as a little kid. And so last time he was on, we surprised him. Longoria zoomed in in the middle of the thing and it, it like made his day. And he had just played the Diamondbacks and he was like, I was too nervous to talk to him and all this sort of <laughs> stuff. I got to tell you, though, when these guys get in their 30s, I think they appreciate it when when younger guys say something like, mm -hmm. hey, you're part of the reason I wanted to be where I am right now. Like, you're the reason I drove to be, you know, so hard to be. And I know there's a fine line between being a professional and wanting to win and kick somebody's ass. But I don't think there's anything wrong with showing a little gratitude and grace. Don't no, you? no way, because I, I just had that happen. I actually just had that happen for the first time the other day, you know, like even in my. Like, I, I don't have a ton of time, you know, like I finally had a season last year that, you know, I have some success, but Corbin Carroll actually like came to first base and, and I guess he's down cause he was hurt for a while and banged his knee up and he got in, got on first, like weird. He got on first. Right. And, um, he goes, Hey man, I, you know, I love watching you hit I'm like, dude, that like, you know, young guy, like next, next wave of phenoms and superstars and he signs a big deal already. And, you know, I, that was just a super cool moment. Cause I know that. I fanboy Pujols the whole time at 21. Yeah, you know, like every time I get to first base, I hey man, what do you got today? Like, how's your golf game? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, you know, share some secrets. Like, tell me some stuff. But no, I couldn't get them to budge that much. But yeah, that it's it's got to be cool for them because you know, regardless of whether you're a you know, however many times Silver Slugger, All Star, MVP, all that stuff, like it, it still feels good to know that there's humans like on the other side. I love that. I love that that Corbin Carroll's got a poster of Nathaniel Lowe hanging out in his bedroom wall. I'll sign it for him for some hits. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do anything for hits. We know yeah, that. Absolutely. Right. Hey, everybody. Summer is fast approaching. That means you're going to be stepping into the batter's box an awful lot over the next couple of months. You want to improve your swing? There's one way to do it. Blast Baseball is the number one hitting improvement solution out there. The Blast Baseball Swing Trainers and Swing Analyzers, they attach to the knob of any bat. They provide real-time feedback with every swing by automatically sending swing metrics to your smartphone. Can you believe what we have done in the technological world? They generate insights that allow you to analyze and then use it in the practical sense. Improve your swing. So visualize your swing with a 3D swing tracer. Compare swings with smart video capture technology. You understand cause and effect with blast hitting insights and learn from exclusive training videos as well. Metrics are automatically sent to the smartphone, as I said. They generate insights. They allow you to analyze, improve your hitting like never before. Here's the nice thing. If it's raining out, wherever you are, if you're on vacation, whatever season it is out there, doesn't matter because with blast baseball you can train all year long regardless of the conditions anytime anywhere and with their new air swing feature you can even train without a ball so head on over to blastmotion.com that is b-l-a-s-t-m-o-t-i-o-n.com and if you enter the code word rose you check out and save 10 bucks on blast baseball personal swing trainers and swing analyzers i guarantee if you work at it and if you use this maybe one day i'll be talking about you on this show so at the Rose Rotation, we really specialize in research. So I want to let you know, I went to your Wikipedia page. Uh -oh. Tell me if this is a true fact. Lowe attended Pope High School in Marietta, Georgia, where he also played upright bass in orchestra and jazz bands. Fact. And chamber fact. orchestra. I don't... <laughs> You're kidding me. No, absolutely not. Stand up bass like the big bad boy where it's got the four strings. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I did. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. It just kind of, it was one of those things and it just kind of caught on and yeah, it's one of, it's, it's the only one that can translate to like when you flip it this way, it's still the same. Right. Mm -hmm. So the bass guitar is tuned the same way as the upright bass is. So there's, I think it's tuned in fourth. So there's three notes in between each string, but you know, like violin, cello, I, uh, viola all that other stuff is tuned in fifth so there's four notes between so it's really hard to play like guitar and that at the same time 
so yeah, I, I don't know. It just made sense. I kept with it and yeah, all through middle school towards high school, it kind of tapered off. I still keep one at the house uh, to mess around with it here and there. I don't play as much as I want to, but yeah, that is a fact. I definitely did that. Wait a second. You still have a stand up bass? No, I have an acoustic bass, Electric. like a bass guitar. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, I was going to really be onto something if you were just <laughs> practicing on the big bad boy. That'd be back cool, then. huh? <laughs> I love that. I love that. So the story of your family is fantastic. We'll get to the relationship with your brother, Josh, of the Tampa Bay Rays in just a second. But I want to start with your dad, who was a damn good baseball player. Mm. But apparently, he wanted to like be an astronaut. Yes, he didn't quite get there, but yeah. he ended up in the Navy for several decades. Was he a Top Gun dude? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he's a Top Gun instructor. Yeah, so like, he flew. Right. So yeah, so you've seen, you saw the original Top Gun, right? Like the the F 14s right? Yeah, of the, he like everyone. Well, not everyone. Most of our family knows that by heart, right? So yeah, he was Top Gun. He was a Tomcat driver, and then um, when he was done flying that airplane, he flew the Hornet, the F eighteen, that's in the the next movie. So yeah, he spent twenty years in the Navy, flew both of those airplanes, and then yeah, retired as a lieutenant commander. That is some cool shit. It is pretty cool, huh? I can't tell him that, you know, because I give him a big head. But yeah, he he he's a little cooler than I give him credit for. So. Um, as an instructor, does he have to wear the shades at all times? I don't know. You know, I wish I had, I wish I had pictures of it. I wish I had pictures. I'm pretty sure that once you graduate from Top Gun, you get a choice to either go into active duty or stay and be an instructor. And I could be totally off with all of it. Like, you know, he'd call me here in a little bit and say, Hey, you're wrong, but I don't know. That's the story we'll go with right now. <laughs> so, uh, when he took you to see the movies, is he like dead on or is he like, not close no uh no he actually liked it because it's pretty realistic yeah like uh, they did such a good job i thought they did such a good job with the second one for sure um yeah i did the too. fact that you know there's like it's still so cool to me that that's no cgi like it's all real film footage like off of a camera on a chase plane like it's the cinematography like the skill that it took like it makes sense why they held on to that movie for so long because it was going to be such a big hit in the box office. Right. And obviously now on streaming platforms and all that stuff, you get, you know, you get the worldwide star, you know, Tom Cruise in there. Like, yeah, it all, it all adds up and it makes sense. And like, yeah, I like those movies a lot. Have you ever been in a plane like that? Not in a, not in, not in the air. Not oh, in the air. I, yeah, the I, yeah, I've been, I've been in the cockpit on the ground, but never in the air. And I would, I would do the entire laundry list to get up in one of those. Pop, so Pops, doesn't he, he doesn't have the keys to the car. He can't just roll in one place and be like, yo. I wish, they, I wish they'd let him keep the keys, you know. Um, now, there's a, there's a couple of reserve bases around here. I don't know. If I hit a couple more a couple more homers here, maybe make an all-star game or two, I, maybe I'd have a chance to kind of weasel my way into that. But, yeah, you know, playing better usually solves everything. So I guess play better, you get a chance to go up in the plane. Sounds good to me. All right, I've got two sons. Are there only two, just you and Josh in the family, or are there others? Yeah. Okay, so I have I have two sons, uh, and I don't favor one over the other, and if I do, I don't let anybody know that I do. So if your dad could only take one of the two of you in a plane, like <laughs> I only get one spin, who do you think he's taking and why? Josh, it's not even close. <laughs> what? <laughs> Josh is the favorite by far. It's not even close. Yeah, my mom went to high school a second time actually for Josh. <laughs> what, what the hell does that mean? That means that she that he figured out how to procrastinate long enough that she'll just swipe in and do it. <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. You're kidding yeah, me. Absolutely. Yeah. Mom no, I, I I tried at school. I I was well in high school anyway, until I figured out that I don't know, AP classes are overrated and that I wasn't going to go to college to like really truly get a degree, you know, kind of majoring in baseball <laughs> helped me out a little bit. But um, yeah, no, Joshua, would, Joshua would mess around and kind of let her do everything for him. <laughs> he yeah. probably is the kid, even in the big leagues, that's still bringing his laundry home, isn't he? Oh, she would do it for him. 100% she would do it for him, but she would do it. Right, okay. I can't, I can't like point the finger at him for that because she would definitely do it for me too. Um, just being that sweet, but 
yeah, if, if there was an opportunity for him to drive from Tampa over to Orlando with a dirty basket of laundry, like he's driving home with it folded and probably with, I don't know, <laughs> vitamins and a snack and a big bag of water. It's like, he, you know, <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's great, man. She takes great care of us, but she definitely, yeah, he's a favorite. It's not even close. <laughs> But let's not make it sound like you're leaving the house with a foot up your ass. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm going to let that one. I'm going to let that one be just for <laughs> just for general purposes. But yeah, um, you know, that's how it goes. I guess you got to have a favorite. Do you have a favorite? Uh, do I have a favorite? No, I, no? I really don't like. No, my, my oldest son's 22. My youngest son is 17 and they are, they are very different. The good news is they are great friends. Boy, the older one was such an asshole to the younger one though. When he, <laughs> when, Cause he was around, he was solo for almost five years. What's the age difference between you guys? Three years, two and a half. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Half, yeah. But you guys were, were you always close or no? Uh, <laughs> we went through phases. 2020 was rough. 2020 was rough. Um, you know, because really? like we're, we're all high strung and like, you know, it's my first I get to the big leagues in 2019 and think like, surely I'm going to have a great winner. We're going to get excited. Like I'm going to make the team, all this other stuff. And I show up and I'm in the B group on day one of spring training. I'm like, well, fuck, here we go again. Like, that's how it goes. Um, yeah, we come home thinking like, OK, well, surely we'll be back next week. We'll be back next week or you know, we're, we're in Orlando. So it was relatively tame. So I. Yeah, I, I kept thinking like, okay, we're going back. And then we go to the golf course and get mad at each other and get mad at each other at home and, you know, we're trying to train and, and stay active somehow and all this other stuff. But yeah, we we had our we had a couple of knockdown drag outs in 2020, but it, you know, nothing like it's just typical brother stuff. That's all. But yeah, I, I'd say we're a lot better friends now, and especially like he just texted me right before I got on thing, right before I got on here saying like, Hey, we got on Verlander tonight. Like, I don't know what's cooler than that. than like asking me like, Hey man, we're facing one of the best right-handed pitchers of all time. Like we're in New York still like, let's What do you got? I think that is the coolest. That's awesome. My, my sons do that with each other. They text each other. What do you have on Verlander? Except they're only playing MLB the show. <laughs> so it's a little different. It's a little different. Uh, so was that because, you guys were competing to get, had you been traded already? Uh, no, I got traded. No, after, you hadn't. I got traded in December, 2020. Right. So was it because you guys were trying to compete and make it in the same organization or something? Because no, people may not remember that. No, I think we're both drafted like, by the Reds. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I never felt like we were competing against each other for spots or stuff like that. Um, you know, there's always like an internal competition for batting average or home runs or things of the sort, but like never, like, no, there was never a roster crunch where it was one low or the other. Um, thankfully, cause that, that's a horrible situation, but you know, I, it was just, it was just being home and not knowing what's going on and not knowing if billions are going to die or all this other stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, it was just a wild situation all the way around attention, but no, it was just, little scraps here and there but yeah josh and i are josh and i are on a great page now like I, I think we have a very healthy relationship like yeah we're, we're in a good spot hey everybody you know there's never been a better time for rose rotation listeners to fanboy like a champ thanks to the good old folks at foco.com foco is officially licensed by major league baseball and the mlbpa they have a wide range of mlb products includes all sorts of fun stuff including my straw hat. So, yeah, I'm going to do the rest of this in my straw hat, which is freaking awesome. Like, you wear these things out in the sun during the summer. Keep this beautiful face protected. It is so important. In addition to this, they got floral shirts. They got loungewear. They got mascot bobbleheads like my boy Slider. Does he look ready for the summer or what? So, it has never been easier to get the gear, find your fandom, let everybody know where your allegiance lies. Foco.com. It has everything you need for all 162 games and beyond. Whether you're taking in the action at the ballpark or you're just lounging at home on the couch. So if you're ready to take your team spirit to the next level, then head on over to foco.com slash John Boy. That is foco, F O C O dot com slash John Boy. Get ready to gear up. And right now, our listeners can use the code word John Boy. You're going to get 15% off your first order. Slider, can you believe it? 15% off your first order. Foco.com. Find your fandom today. 
to let, let's spin it back to 2016 because it's it's not very often that brothers are going to end up in the same draft, particularly oh, yeah. right when they're not the same age. Because Josh is this right this stud uh, player out of Georgia, high yeah. school player, and everybody's yeah. talking him up as a first rounder. And here you are, you kind of had to bounce around to find your place. Eventually, landed a good place at Mississippi State, mm. feeling good, but you weren't going to be talked about as a, a first rounder necessarily. Was there? Uh, a jealousy? Was there something you had to get over when your brother was kind of getting the shine? No, I, I fully expected that. Like, I, I don't know. I was, I was just happier for him than anything else. And, you know, seeing like, seeing the talent level, like the top tier of college baseball playing in the SEC, like, yeah, I got it. You know, there were guys that were going to get picked that were more talented than I had that went and like performed in the, in the league and like in Cape Cod too. Cause they're, you know, you, you always hear, in college, you hear stories like, oh, that guy hit 300 in the Cape. Like, oh, that guy hit 350 in the Cape and all this other stuff. You're like, oh, wow, like, maybe they're better than I am. But, yeah, you know, like I, I played against Brian Reynolds. I played against uh, the top draft picks, A.J. Puck and and all those guys around there, like Pete Alonzo, you know, like those those were all guys in the league that were picked super high, and I understood, you know, like, and I'm a first baseman. Uh, yeah, I hit, yeah, I hit 350, but I hit five homers. Like, what's five homers going to do in pro ball? when I just had 56 games in college ball to try and hit it near it with a metal bat, you know, but uh, yeah, when he got picked, it was all excitement. And then, yeah, I, it felt like I kind of like he got my agent by default because my agent had, you know, gravitated towards Josh and had said, you know, let me represent you all this other stuff. And then it kind of felt like I was an afterthought there, which is fine because, you know, I didn't think I even needed an agent at that point. And I, what, what's an agent going to do for me if I'm, you know, an average like average college draft without really a plus tool. And then, yeah, the way it works out, you know, I can't really, I can't really say enough thank yous because he's been there for me the entire time. He didn't have to. And now I, you know, wind up at a smaller, like personable, like, do you know David Meter at all? That's my guy. Like he's, he's, no, I really, I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, but it's not a, it's not a huge, like we don't have a receptionist that I have to introduce myself to and sit in a waiting room to go like, make an appointment with my agent like if i want to go play pickleball i call david and he wants to go play pickleball like it's great you know that's good and uh yeah and, and josh was instrumental in getting me to that point but yeah it felt good you know knowing like the organization has enough trust in in the both of us that they're going to pick him 13th and then me in the 13th round it's like yeah let's let's go do this thing and then see how it goes and yeah we we live together instructs my first year low a my first full season after spring training and then i got moved to high a and then when i got registered and did my sophomore year in high a he was there again and i moved i moved on after a couple months and that was that but yeah you know we we spent a lot of time playing games together in the minor leagues grinding through the bus rides of the midwest league which were something serious at one point and then uh yeah roasted in the florida state league together but yeah that's how it goes it was cool how much do you how much do you think you'll appreciate that 20 years from now when you guys are done playing ball that you'll look back? There aren't a lot of brothers that get to ride buses together, man. No. Um, yeah, you know, and then and then baseball reference hopefully will exist in 20 years so I can show our kids that, you know, your uncle was a better hitter in the minor leagues. <laughs> <laughs> I got my silver slugger before he did, so, you know. <laughs> I love um, it. But I no, love it. It'll be healthy. It, I enjoy it. Listen, I, I know you're busy. I got a, just a few more and then I'll let you get back to hitting show homers and, and doing what you do. Um, we're basically a quarter of the way through the season here. And there are still people that are going to look in your division and say, well, it's the Astros to lose. It's been that way for, you know, seven years or what have you. Mm. But I look at your team and it's not like the cute little warm, fuzzy Texas Rangers, like the little train that could. Y'all spent a half billion dollars on your middle infield. You paid 185 to Jacob DeGrom. Nathan Ovaldi ain't cheap. Like, this is a team that it feels like you guys are ready. To those naysayers out there, what do you tell them about the Rangers? Um, You know, it's funny you say that because I got on a Zoom call too early in spring training and I watched a certain host at the network um, talk about how it's Houston's division again, and they're going to win the division by 15 games. And I, you know, and I was like, gosh, you know, that kind of pisses me off. And I don't want to say anything about it because we haven't even played a single spring training practice yet. But like, 
he can't sleep on the Rangers, man. We have, yeah, we have arguably not, uh, not arguably when he's healthy, he's the best right-handed pitcher in baseball. Duh. We have the best middle infield in baseball. Duh. I mean, the corners are, we're doing a pretty solid job there and Josh Young's going to have a great career. I'm going to get hot here soon. The outfield situation's great. And then, you know, Jonah's been killing it behind the dish. So like, Mm -hmm. honestly, at this point, like, yeah, I know it's May 16th and there's 120 games left or whatever it is, but the division is ours to lose. And yeah, I, you know, you can't, you can't take anything away from obviously Houston and Seattle and Los Angeles. And, you know, that's Oakland's still a major league team. Like you can't look down on them by any means. You can turn around and lose a game because we just did the other day, but you know, I got this team's for real. Like the, the starting staff is for real. There are guys in the bullpen that are competitors. There are guys that will get big outs for us. There's bench bats that are going to get big hits. There's starters that are going to have hot stretches that are going to carry the team. And then maybe it's another guy for another week. And it's okay for some guys to be cold because it's a team game. Right. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd be, if we're not in contention, like coming down the stretch, I would be very, very surprised to say something has gone horribly wrong. Good explanation. I'm always curious when guys, like I always say this, players shouldn't give a shit what I think or what people who are on streaming services or television or radio or wherever think about your team because it just doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Not at all. Does it? Okay, but does it piss you off a little bit if, if we don't give you some flowers and throw bouquets in your direction? No, no, because that's like, I don't know, that's that's what I've always dealt with like me, you know, I'm not a highly touted prospect or a high draft pick or a, you know, fan favorite to where I'm going to get voted into the all-star game every year. Like that's the journey that I've had to go through. So like being on a team where something like that is happening, like it's, it's something that I'm personally already comfortable with. So it's okay for people not to pay attention to the team because, you know, they're not in this clubhouse, but you know, when you look up in August and uh, we're our records where it's at and, and we're coming down the stretch in September and we're I in a clinch like I'm not going to be surprised and I don't think the guys in this clubhouse are going to be surprised nice I heard the clubhouse by the way is unbelievable that's one of the three uh, I, parks yeah. I have yet to be if this was on a phone I'd take you on a tour maybe I come back again and give you a tour or send you a video or Please. something because it is yes. wild Okay, wow. it, what are the, what are the three best things about the clubhouse for those of us that that don't have access to it today? The kitchen is definitely on the short list. I think the weight room is like nothing like it. We have a whole we have a second deck with a cardio floor. You know, there's like yeah. machines to stretch on and do all this other stuff and like all these treadmills with the funny you know like the rehab treadmills that sit around your waist and you can run and then make it weightless. We have a swimming pool with a current in it. Like you can hit the button on the current. And it, you can swim in place. Like Martin Perez will do that sometimes between starts. It's like, okay. Um, we don't have cold tubs and hot tubs. We have cold pools and hot pool. Like it's, I don't know. It's, there's nothing wrong. It's like they thought of everything that they could think of and then added double on top of it. I mean, we park in a parking deck with a like motion sensor by the door. Um, there's a gate with a motion sensor when you pull out of the parking lot. Like it's, dude, this is, this is the big leagues. Do they wash your car for you? Ah, that's the last thing that I got to get them to do. Uh, you know, we've, I've had that in some places. They used to do it in spring training in Tampa. That was the best car wash I've ever had, by the way. Whoever whoever was in charge of that um, <laughs> did a great job. Kudos to you because, yeah, that was, that was one of the first times that I've, yeah, you know, I let them vacuum a 2004 F-150 and put the lines in the, you know, the lines in the uh, carpet in the bottom. Like, and that was a show. But, yeah, yeah. Um, no, we do it right here, man. And and like, you know, to lose to lose 102 games in this uniform and then 96 and then now like watch the organization turn. Like it's rare that you get a rare that you get a spot to be like emotionally invested in the major leagues, you know, because like it's such a business that you get chewed up and spit out if you don't perform. And that's how it goes. But yeah, to to see like the DJs new, like the house lights are different. Like obviously the team is different. The starting staff is different. They're buying all these pieces and trading for these pieces and picking guys up. That's like, it just makes sense. So uh, yeah, winning in Texas is not really a surprise for the guys that are part of this organization. You know what they don't need a new first baseman. (laughs) All right. We're going to spin the wheel of moderately interesting things and get you out of here. 
go back and eat great meals and go lift weights and so uh, crushing it. Oh, this is a good one. Who is your first celebrity crush? First celebrity crush? Um, man, Carrie McGillis. Carrie McGillis has got to be on the short list. I thought she was fantastic in Top Gun. Absolutely. Kelly McGillis? Kelly McGillis. Back in the... Say it. Gosh, Kelly back McGillis. Back in the... I mean, I mean, yeah, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back in like it back in the, the 86 version of Top Gun? I mean, yeah. Like who's gonna say no to that? But I now mean, it's now it's Brie Larson. I think Brie Larson is so attractive. Oh, yeah, okay. Brie Come Larson, on. that's a good Short one. Short hair and long hair. I, I think she's very attractive. But it, it, didn't that fly around the uh social media wasn't that the whole brie larson i'm dating brie larson thing no i was with margot robbie for a while you know margot robbie okay you guys knew that or not but yes per tmz we were a thing okay yes congratulations on that by the way (laughs) are you kidding me she should have been thrilled listen i've been married almost 26 years my wife says that hey if you know anybody that you think is a smoke show knocks on our door you are more than welcome to go away for the weekend because it's not (laughs) happening that's what she always says no, she just got more annoyed that people kept sending it to her on Twitter than anything else. She's like, yeah, yeah, I don't care. I don't care if you're dating Margot Robbie. I'm like, but if one more person sends me a tweet, I- I'm going to lose it. <laughs> By the way, do we have any idea how that started? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you because, man, she was dating. She was dating uh, Kiner. She was dating uh, Alejandra Kirk. She was dating Mark Olson, not Matt Olson kind of like you know carrie mcgillis kelly McGill, that same thing yeah why not but yeah oh, uh, yeah she got around for a little while i hope her husband's okay with that but <laughs> i guess that's how it goes i guess that's just you know the price of fame sometimes <laughs> listen dude this was a uh this i could have done this for another half hour but i know you got a day job to do so i hope you had fun i had a blast out here continued success thank you thanks for having me on Absolutely. You tell all those guys there in the Rangers club. By the way, you're going to play Josh for the first time. Are you going to stay at each other's houses when you play? No, uh, no, I'm going to stay as far away as possible because the entire Lowe family will be there. We had 80 last year when he was supposed to be there, but he got optioned. Um, Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be a treat. And I'll tell you what, uh, more fun than like more fun than the actual baseball game is just like having that many friends and family together. And they're like making a vacation out of it because obviously it's in Tampa they're going to get a, a house, big rental house, and stay next to each other on the beach, and it's going to be a good time. By the so, way, yeah. if he hits an extra base hit, rip him around first. <laughs> you better believe I'll try. Hell yes. I love it. I love it. For our one-of-a-kind producer, the awfully talented Robbie Scirocco, and our summer intern, Alden Stone, and Nathaniel, not Natel Lowe, or whatever they're calling him those days. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.